You know, there is something peculiar about the directors who are auteurs. They don't just direct a movie. Instead, they write poetry on screen. And what good is a poet if they don't romanticize those lonely eyes? For the most part, I believed cinema is nothing but capturing those eyes at their most vulnerable moment. And here you can think of any great actor on screen, and all you will remember is their expressive eyes. While I rewatched John Woo's 1989 film The Killer, I only looked into Chow Yun Fat's eyes because that's where I found the real meaning of his loneliness. The killer begins with our protagonist A Jong sitting in an empty church ironically called the Church of Salvation. At the beginning of the film, A Jong was lonely, but he wasn't burdened by that loneliness, but that was about to change soon enough. He looked at Mother Mary and felt a connection, not because A Jong was a believer, but because he knew even the gods get lonely quite often. That was when his best friend, a former assassin and his handler, brother Fung Se, arrived at the church, a place they often met. Brother Se gave A Jong yet another mission that needed precision and violence. He knew A Jong would never disappoint him because he was the best hitman up for hire, and the reason was simple. A Jong was an honorable man and he had nothing else to lose. But little did A Jong know that this contract was going to change his life forever. A spoiler warning ahead as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film. So if you've watched the killer already, let's dive straight into the video. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. Why did A Jong decide to help Jenny? A Jong arrived at a nightclub to finish the contract, but during the shootout, he accidentally fired a shot close to a woman's eyes who used to sing songs at the bar every night. Her name was Jenny. At the moment, A Jong himself had been shot twice, because of which he wasn't able to take Jenny to the hospital, but if he had the means to do so, he wouldn't have let her bleed. He gave her his scarf to stop the bleeding, but there wasn't much he could do about her situation, and that was the guilt that took away his peace. Later that night, when Brother Se was tending to A Jong's bullet wounds, all the assassin could remember was the pain of a woman he had accidentally impaired for life. Jenny on the other hand had lost her sight as her cornea was severely damaged. She wouldn't be able to see again until she got the cornea replaced, but that was an expensive procedure and Jenny couldn't afford one. Every night she sang at the same bar, but now she had a strange visitor who heard her voice from the father's table but never managed to gather enough courage to apologize for destroying her life. Ajong was remorseful. He had never felt the burden of his actions as heavy as this before and he wanted to make amends but didn't know how. While Jenny was returning home at night, two goons tried to steal her purse, and that was when Ajong stepped in and beat the hell out of them to protect Jenny. He later took Jenny home and started looking after her to repent for his mistake. However, Ajong never told her his real identity, or Jenny wouldn't have let the monster come anywhere near to her, and he knew that. He hid the truth and started a beautiful friendship with Jenny that soon turned into love. Why did Ajong want to leave the business? You know people are really vocal about their love for morally grey characters on social media and the characters they mention are I mean I don't want to demean someone's choices but it's characters like A Jong whom you can really call morally grey he's not your regular assassin A Jong runs by a strict code of conduct maybe he is more honorable than a police officer himself he doesn't shoot women and children and as soon as he accidentally hurt Jenny he decided to leave the business because he didn't see himself fit for it anymore he wanted to spend the rest of his life looking after Jenny so that he could repent for his mistake. A Jung knew there was no salvation for the crime he had committed, yet he wanted to die trying for it. Brother Se had bought one final case for his friend. He wanted A Jung to eliminate the triad leader named Wong Dong Yu. A Jung agreed to it but demanded a huge sum of money, which he intended to use for Jenny's operation. He wanted to take Jenny to Singapore for her cornea transplant, but unfortunately, the day never came. The new triad leader Wong Hoi had sent assassins to get rid of A Jong. Somehow he managed to escape. What did Wong Hoi want? Dong Yu's nephew Wong Hoi had ordered the assassination of his own uncle as he wanted to become the new leader of the triad. Earlier in the film, it was Wong Hoi who gave A Jong the contract to kill Dong Yu's brother Jong Wan at the night bar where Jenny got hurt. So it was kind of obvious what Wong Hoi's goal was and he most likely sent assassins to get rid of A Jong as he didn't want anyone to find out about his treachery as it was A Jong who killed most of the triad members on Brother Se's order. For A Jong however, what was more tragic was that Brother Se was a part of the grand scheme. And to serve his new master, Brother Se betrayed the person who trusted him most in the world. 
The betrayal crushed Ajong's morals, who started questioning his rules and code of conduct. Was there no honor left in the new generation? Is the triad lifestyle not suited for hitmen like Ajong anymore? Can men not keep their words anymore? After the betrayal, Ajong made it his life's mission to get the money from Wong Hoi so he could take Jenny out of Hong Kong and get her eyesight back. Wong Hoi, on the other hand, hired a professional hitman to get Ajong killed. Why did Li Ying help Ajong? The first time Li Ying saw Ajong's eyes, he saw passion and compassion in them. And I guess these two words gave Li Ying enough reason to trust Ajong more than his own corrupt superiors. It is often said that stories of a cop and a criminal would never go out of fashion. And you know the reason why. These two archetypes are like parallel lines that would run in the same direction forever, but never actually collide. Li Ying had always been a diligent and righteous cop who wanted to put criminals behind bars, but bureaucracy only made his job harder. He saw his own men getting killed on duty, but if he dared to shoot a criminal, then he would have to fill hundreds of official pages to justify his act. In short, Li Ying was getting restless because his seniors sitting on high chairs wouldn't let him do his job. Li Ying had been running after Ah Jung like a cat after a mouse as he wanted to arrest the man so he could arrange incriminating evidence against the new triad leader who had killed a bunch of people in the past six months. However, Ah Jung wasn't easy to catch. When Li Ying came across Ah Jung for the first time, he saw an assassin fighting for the life of a young girl who was stuck in a crossfire. At that moment, Li Ying asked himself a simple question. Why would an assassin like Ah Jung risk his own life to get a girl to the hospital? Little did he know that Ah Jung was burdened with guilt. He had accidentally hurt a woman in the past, and he didn't want history to repeat itself again. And as Li Ying got to know Ah Jung better, he understood his reason for waging war against the entire triad just to get money to help a woman see again. Li Ying even kept a close watch on Jenny's apartment as he knew Ah Jung might still be in contact with her. And slowly, the two enemies bridged their differences until they had taken down a common enemy, that is, Wong Hoi. Li Ying knew from the very beginning that he wouldn't be able to arrest Wong Hoi because of the prevailing corruption in the police department. Wong Hoi's men had killed Li Ying's partner, and the police officer was burning with a desire for vengeance. That was the reason why he didn't think twice before joining hands with the criminal himself. Why did Li Ying shoot Wong Hoi? It is said that one bad fish can spoil the whole pond, and it would be the perfect idiom to define Wong Hoi. He was literally the root of all problems. He was the one who turned Brother Se against Ah Jong and refused to give him the money for the contract he had already completed. Later, he hired a bunch of professional assassins only to make things more complicated, and Ah Jong had no other option than to burn the man's house of cards to teach him a lesson. However, before Ah Jong could do so, Brother Se had a change of heart and convinced his friend to let him talk to Wong Hoi once more and get back the money he needed for Jenny's operation. After a violent clash with Wong Hoi, Brother Se did bring the money to the Church of Salvation to complete the promise he had made to his only friend and was able to atone for betraying Ah Jong in the past. But as soon as the man got salvation, he was shot to death by Wong Hoi and his men who had arrived at the church to kill Ah Jong and end the chapter once and for all. With blazing guns and bloodshed all around the holy place, Ah Jong and Li Ying were able to take down most of Wong Hoi's men. However, the treacherous triad leader took Jenny hostage to have leverage on the two men who had killed his entire battalion. But Ah Jung couldn't let anything happen to Jenny, and that was the reason why he agreed to put down his gun. He had planned to shoot Wong Hoi with Li Ying's gun, but before he could do so, Wong Hoi shot Ah Jung in the eyes and took away the thing that was most precious to him. Ah Jung wanted to donate his cornea for Jenny's operation, but he couldn't do it anymore. Wong Hoi took away Ah Jung's last opportunity to get salvation, and while Li Ying wanted to tend to his friend's wound, he couldn't stay back as he watched to catch Wong Hoi before he could escape. Li Ying knew that he wouldn't be able to arrest Wong Hoi lawfully, as the man was too powerful for it. But Wong Hoi had done more damage to society than the devil himself, and he needed to be killed to clean the pond, or dead bodies would keep turning up each day. Even after the police arrived at the scene and arrested him, Li Ying didn't put down his gun. Instead, he took revenge for his partner Sang Ye and his new friend Ah Chong. He shot Wong Hoi in front of the entire police force just to make a statement that sometimes breaking the law is the only way to serve justice. Meanwhile, Ah Jung, who had lost his eyesight, was desperate to find Jenny so that he could embrace her for one last time before taking his final breath. But maybe it was his karma to feel what Jenny had been feeling for six months. Ah Jung didn't just lose his eyes that day. He lost the battle with destiny. He lost the only thing he could have been able to give Jenny to redeem himself. But he couldn't. Ah Jung died while Jenny kept screaming his name so that she could hold her lover again. 
It was a doomed love story. What will happen to Lee Ying and Jenny? So the 2024 film is basically an official remake of the 1989 film. Though it is set in a different time with different characters, and I guess it won't have any connection with the 80s film. Hence, in case you want to know what might have happened to Lee Ying and Jenny after Ah Chong's death, then I can speculate a bit, and you can share your own theories in the comments. I'll start though. Lee Ying was most likely fired from the department for pulling such a stunt in front of so many policemen, and after losing his job, he might have considered completing the promise he had made to his friend. I guess Lee Ying used Ah Chong's money to take Jenny out of Hong Kong so that she could get her vision back and they probably didn't return to the city again and spend the rest of their lives together. Li Ying had lost a lot of friends while being a detective, and I don't think he defended himself for killing Wong Khoi. He was the kind of evil that needed to be tamed, and Li Ying did what he felt was right. If I'm not being too helpful, then Jenny might have gotten her vision back, and she was finally able to see Ah Jung's picture or face again, though from a completely different perspective. She only remembered his face as the assassin who destroyed her life. But now she would see him as a person who gave her a second life. And wherever Rajong might be, I think that would be the only thing that would give peace to his restless soul. Thank you for watching this video and do share your theories in the comment section below. Do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your daily dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye.